I arrived in Prague to begin a 10-day Uniworld cruise along the Danube River. At the hotel in Prague, on the first night, our group was delivered the surprising news that our port of embarkation had changed from Nuremberg to Passau because the river was too low in Nuremberg to handle the boat. It would be a three and a half hour bus ride to Passau. If we still wanted to go to Nuremberg, that would be an additional three hours in the bus. As much as I had been looking forward to seeing Nuremberg's rally grounds, a full day in a bus wasn't the five star vacation I had in mind. So I handed over my bags to the Uniworld representatives at the hotel and was reunited with them in my stateroom four hours later on the SS Beatrice, minus a luggage lock and a pair of Gucci suede shoes. An auspicious beginning for the cruise that would, in Uniworld's words, make memories. Ah, uh, summer cruise along the Danube River. It's been on my wish list for years. Who hasn't been swept away with the images of those commercials by cruise lines that make a river cruise something relaxing, romantic, and filled with European charm? Passau is a town in Lower Bavaria where the Danube is joined by two other rivers, the Inn from the south and the Liz from the north. The biggest attraction in Passau is the pipe organ in St. Stephen's Cathedral, the largest organ in Europe. Unfortunately, the church was closed, but the shopping mall was open. But then there was always a bus to cruise around in. Regensburg was a 120 kilometer drive from Passau. During the drive, a guy named Sebastian shared his thoughts. Although he was told to avoid politics, he didn't. Ironically, on our way to Regensburg, he started to talk about how he believed that the current downfall of Germany began because of President Reagan. This was a bus filled with Reaganites. You're all from America, nobody from somewhere else. Only America. Okay, so only America, that means they have to follow the strict guiding rules, okay. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we, we got guiding rules from Uniworld. The guiding rules are when we have guests from America, we're not allowed to talk about politics, religion and sex. <laughs> Enjoy the silence. Regensburg was an attractive medieval town with a 13th century cathedral. A popular sausage stand was around the corner from where a plaque on a building referred to Goethe having slept there. Near the church was an ice cream stand where tourists were inhaling gelato by the scoopfuls. It was a hot day in the old town, certainly worth seeing, but after several hours we were all ready to get back on the boat and start cruising. Although the river kept flowing and swans, boats and others were going up and down the Danube, we stayed put in Passau. The cathedral was still closed. The shopping mall had been shopped, and the sleepy town was still yawning. Nearby towns to Passau had a few restaurants, maypoles, and a church or two. But a maypole without a folk festival or a dance is like a light show without electricity. And once you've seen one maypole, well, you've seen enough. Uniworld's management kept saying that we'd be leaving soon, but three days into the cruise, we were still stuck at the docks. The Beatrice is a recently redesigned ship, deemed a super ship by Uniworld. There are marble floors, a white Murano chandelier with blue shades, and a grand staircase made of nickel and black iron. The Royal Suite is 390 square feet with light wood and blue and white finishes. The large picture windows were impressive, but so far mostly looked out onto the other boats which pulled up alongside. The views varied from other ships' cabins and their occupants to groups of guests leaning over balconies to get a better look into the Beatrice. Where were those stunning Danube vistas which filled Uniworld's website? Hello, how are you? How's your boat? It's good? Good boat? Nay. Nay, hey. Okay. In the afternoon of the third day of the bus cruise, the Beatrice finally began to float down the Danube. The Danube is over 1,700 miles long, beginning in Germany's Black Forest and flowing through 10 countries before ending in the Black Sea. Now the Danube is not blue, 
It's more of a murky green brown, but the mountains lining the river, especially through Lower Austria, are stunning. The river was, during the Roman Empire, the frontier. It has been an important trade route linking Vienna, Bratislava, Budapest, and Belgrade. But today it's used more for recreation and tourism. There's a bicycle path along the Danube, which is considered one of the best in Europe. The Danube has been called the River of Kings. The ancient Greeks navigated up the Danube from the Black Sea. Later, goods were transported by boat or barge, and this development helped build both the Habsburg and Hungarian empires. The river formed the Ottoman Empire's northern border for many centuries. During the wars of the 20th century, the Danube saw many upheavals, but today it is part of the EU and designated as Corridor 7, an important transport route. Today there are numerous cruise ships. According to the website Cruise Critic, the top river cruise ships are AMA Waterways, Viking River Cruises, and Tuck. On board the Beatrice, the Danube did become blue at night, thanks to some well-placed blue lights. But the cruise came to an abrupt stop the next day. Seems to be about the intermediate uh, hotel arrangements you make for tomorrow night. Why don't we stay on this boat and just connect with our reservations that were already made two and a half hours away from where we will be or less because you want to take us two and a half hours from tomorrow and just get us back on the track where we're supposed to be. We don't want to get off the boat. I don't want to get off the boat. Have the entertainment, the, the liquor, the, 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 have it all, have it all. Why do we have to go on to this hotel that's a mystery to you and to me? Okay, very good uh, question. Thank you for, for that. Thank you, because it's a, it's a teamwork. It's a teamwork, it's not you against us or us against you. Thank you. And this is In the end, it wasn't teamwork. We were forced to leave the boat in Bratislava and travel the rest of the cruise again by bus, this time along a freeway to Budapest. The itinerary was not followed and the passengers were spread among hotels in Budapest to spend the remaining time on their own. In the fine print, Uniworld states that they can make changes as they wish for the safety of their guests. Also stated is that Uniworld would alert guests in advance of boarding of any known changes. In trying to get some sort of refund for both the interrupted cruise, lost days, extra hotel charges, and stolen items from the bags, Uniworld offered a future cruise credit on another cruise. It was about 2.5% of the cost of the cruise. The Uniworld cruise turned out to be an extremely expensive bus tour of the Danube.